Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna give you a guide on renovating for dummies. I'm gonna break down things you should try and do in your very first renovation, and some things you should probably steer clear of if you're looking to do a renovation for the very first time, or if you're looking to have a more stress-free renovation journey. Now, Emily and I have done three renovations on our own home so far, and we've also helped out on a number of renovations for friends and family. And we've done things such as tearing out walls and ceilings and similar things just like painting and doing flooring. So I'm gonna break down for you my top five things to do as a renovating dummy and how you can get the biggest bang for buck and not spend all of your weekends renovating and trying to get ahead and maximize your return so you can get your first investment or your new house renovated up to a good standard and not break the bank at the same time. Now, if you wanna to make tons of money renovating, there is one skill and one tool that I could highly recommend that anyone can really do. It does take a bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, this is a way you can make thousands of dollars and save thousands of dollars at the same time. And that is learning to use a paint sprayer. We've got a Wagner Control Pro. It's a semi-professional paint sprayer that we bought from Bunnings. Yes, Bunnings, which we pick up a few snags um, with onion as well when we're there doing our shopping on the weekends. But we picked this paint sprayer up for about $1,100 as I recall. And it was the best money we ever spent on a product that has helped us in renovating. Now this thing is so good if you've got a whole house that needs to be painted either inside or out. All the time can be spent prepping your property for paint spraying and then you can knock out the painting of an entire house in just a couple of days. It will give you a really nice smooth finish and that means you don't get any streaks or stroke marks from paint brushes and rollers when you use the paint sprayer correctly. Now it does take a little bit of practice but it's really a skill I think anyone can do. And the key is to practice with water. You can basically practice with a spray gun on your fence or with some paint if you really want to. And you can get an understanding of how the flow works and exactly how to get a good finish from your product. Now there are plenty of YouTube channels out there that show you how to use a paint sprayer and why you should use it and to help you through some issues you might have when using the product. So that is number one is painting and especially using a paint sprayer to speed up the process and get a fantastic finish. Now moving on to number two, which is another big cosmetic item and that is flooring. I think you can pretty much do most flooring here in Australia yourself and you can save stacks of money and you can knock it out in a couple of days depending on what flooring you use. Now I'm gonna go into two subcategories of flooring and that is natural timber floors and that is anything other than natural timber. So concrete, uh, carpeted areas and uh, tiles. Now in my opinion, in the general living area of a house, it's really nice to have the same flooring throughout a space, the same color, the same consistency. Now it's not always achievable in a renovation, but with timber flooring, if you can refinish and resand a floor yourself, you're gonna save thousands of dollars than paying a trade to do it, and it's really not that hard. Emily and I have hired a drum sander and some edging sanders from Bunnings, and you can get out there and do this your work yourself. It's really important when you're using a drum sander to practice with a high grit count so that you don't chew up the floors when you're practicing. Just get an understanding of the feel of using a drum sander. I'll show some clips here as well of us using a drum sander in a couple of our renovations. And we've had really good success and we're really happy with the finishes that we've got and it's only cost us a, a few thousand dollars to do this rather than maybe $10,000 to hire this out to a supplier or a third party. Now the other option when you don't have natural timber floor is luxury vinyl planks. We recently laid luxury vinyl planks at my parents' place and they actually look fantastic and they only costed $19 a square meter. Now they look like timber, they have a bit of sponge in them and you lay an underlay and they clip together really simply. We managed to lay an entire dining area in under four hours, and I reckon you could do a whole house in a week. That would sort you out and save you a stack of money. Now number three is not cheaping out on your fittings. So when you're going to buy new taps and tapware, we've done some renovations where we've gotten cheaper tapware, and we've done some other renovations where we spent a lot more money on good quality tapware. Now I don't think you have to spend thousands of dollars on high quality tapware, but spending you know a few hundred dollars rather than 50 or 40 dollars on cheap tapware, it's definitely worth the money. It's gonna come um, with better warranties and it's also gonna last a lot longer. 
and it's gonna save you in the long run. You know, you never wanna end up with plumbing leaks or plumbing issues. So spend a bit more money on good quality tapware. It's gonna give you a great return on your investment and it's also a great way to add some character to a room. Number four is, I probably should have put this as number one, but number four is demolition. Now doing demolition yourself is a great idea. Get some good quality shoes because you've got to be careful on a construction site to not get nails through your feet and that you don't you know, hurt yourself. Now doing this with family and friends is a great idea. You can have an awesome time, have a bit of banter, share some food together and smash out demolition in a day or two. It's gonna save you thousands of dollars in the process and you can load all of your rubbish into the skip bin or into your trailer and take it off to the tip. We found this has been a great way for us to save money in our renovations and get things moving along quickly. Number five is picking great lighting. Lighting sets the mood in a space and leaving old light fixtures is a big no-no when you can upgrade to more energy efficient lights that are gonna give you a better color um, and make the space feel, you know, more daylight or more mellow depending on the mood and situation you're looking for. Now in all of our renovations, we've switched over to LEDs. They take up less power and you can also put them to different color um, lumens. So you can go from a cool white, like a daylight color or a stark white, to somewhere in between all the way up to a warm white where it's quite yellow. And having that option and going to that lower energy consumption is not only good for your power bill and the environment, it's also great to setting the mood in a home. Another quick tip on lighting as our fifth and final point is to get a feature piece. We put a huge feature light in our dining area here in our current home. We love the look of it. It's got lights going all different directions and it's a real feature piece when people come into the door, they see our open plan living space and it just gives the room a great feel. And especially when you've done white walls or light color walls, having a feature light that draws people's attention is a really great thing for a room and it just gives it some a better vibe and you know really fills out the space. So that's been my top five areas for dummies on how you can better manage your cosmetic renovations. Now I would highly recommend that if you're doing your first renovation you steer clear of knocking out walls and floors and you try and do these more cosmetic things like I've discussed in this video. Knocking out these renovation tips for dummies is gonna not only make your renovation journey a little bit easier, it's also gonna potentially help you get through your first reno without major troubles. And any renovation where you get through on time, on budget is a complete success. And these are ways that you can do some more DIY, save some more money and potentially build up some more equity as well in your property portfolio. If you could drop a like on this video, it would help more people see this kind of content and push my videos out through the YouTube algorithm. And if you could subscribe to my channel down below, that would be great. I'd love to see you become part of this community and part of this channel that I'm trying to grow and sharing all things property investing and renovations. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.